Okay, so continuing with every exam question that has been asked, we're now going to be looking at solving equations with graphs. Now, if you're really interested in this topic, it has popped up in the previous section, which was nonlinear graphs, but these ones tend to be a little bit more specific. So let's just dive in with this. It says here, the diagram shows part of the graph y equals x squared minus 2x plus 3. By drawing a suitable straight line, use your graph to find estimates for the solutions of x squared minus 3x minus 1 equals 0. So we need to find two lines that when they cross over will give us the solution to this one. Now the way that I teach this is I say, let's write down the one that we've been given, which is y equals x squared minus 2x plus 3. And the one we're trying to solve is 0 equals x squared minus 3x minus 1. Now the reason I've written it this way around with the zeros is because I kind of wanted them to line up so that I had the x squareds and all on the same side. Now because I want to find out the difference between these two things that I've got here, if I subtract them, you'll see what will happen, and hopefully you'll, you'll agree with why I've done this. Now, if I do y take away 0, I just get y. x squared take away x squared, that's nothing. If I do minus 2x minus minus 3x, so that's minus 2x minus minus 3x, that's actually minus 2x plus 3x, which is just x. And then I'm also going to be doing 3 minus minus 1, that's 3 plus 1, which is 4. So we're going to actually be thinking that our two lines I'm going to have are y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3, and the second line I'm going to draw is y equals x plus 4. Now the reason this works is because if I said that y equals x plus 4, and I wanted to solve it with y equals x squared minus 2x plus 3, I can just make those bits equal to each other. That's x squared minus 2x plus 3 equals x plus 4. If I subtract x and if I subtract 4, I come up with the equation that they're actually wanting us to solve. So that's why I'm going to draw the line y equals x plus 4. Okay, I'm going to draw that line. I'm going to draw it here in red. So it's going to have a gradient of 1, and it's going to have a y-intercept of 4. Well, gradient of 1 just means it's going to go across like this. It means it's going to go, um, every time you go one square, across, one square across, it's going to go one square up. So that's quite neatly drawn as though I had a ruler. Now what we're going to do is just find out the x values of those corresponding crossing points, okay? So as I zoom in here, one of them is going to be about here, which looks about, if this is minus 1, and then this is minus 2, it looks about minus 0 0.3, I would say. That's about a minus 0 0.3. And then I'm going to, oh my god, that is the wobbliest line ever, but it straightens up nicely. And this is 3, and I'd say this is probably about 3.3 .3 as well. So we have minus 0 0.3 and 3.3. .3. So my solutions are minus 0 0.3 and 3.3. .3. Technically, I should say x equals these things. So we have minus 0 0.3 and 3.3 .3 as well, and you get a method mark for drawing that on there. Two marks, though. I think that's pretty harsh for two marks. Okay, this time it's just straight lines here. It says the graphs with these two equations have been drawn on the grid. Using the graphs, find the estimates to the simultaneous equations. Now, it's just worth noting that these are exactly the same as these ones. So literally, it just means find out where they cross. Now, where they cross here, you might find it useful to kind of draw this on with a ruler. Now, I don't have a ruler, so I'm going to use this. I would say that looks like minus 1.3. And if we're going to read up this one, that looks like 2.3 probably needs to move across a bit, but I'm going to just leave it in the middle. I would say that looks about 2.25 maybe, but you could put 2.2 or 2.3. So I'd say that the solutions are x is 2.25, x is 2.25, and y is minus 1.3, because it wants the solutions for simultaneous equations, which means that there's going to be both of those things. So we've got that. Yep, both of those would be accepted. They do give a range of values for these kinds of things. So trying to give it accurately is always a good idea. Okay, we can do the same thing that I did previously. We're going to subtract them. So the one that we've got is y equals x squared minus 3. And we're going to try and find estimates to this one. So I'm going to do y equals x squared minus 3. And my other one is 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 2. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this minus 3. I'm going to put it above the minus 2 so that when I subtract them, I'm going to actually come up with it a little bit. Um, they're going to be in like the right column of where they should be. So y take away 0 is y. x squared take away x squared is nothing. Now this one's the weird one. We've got nothing minus minus 2x. Nothing minus minus 2x is plus 2x. 
and then here we've got minus 3 subtract minus 2. That's minus 3 minus minus 2. It's minus 3 plus 2, which is minus 1. So I'm going to draw the line y equals 2x minus 1. So it's going to cross at minus 1, and each time you go across one space, it's going to go up 2. Now be really careful, because when I say one space, I don't mean one square, I mean one space. And it's annoying, because this axis is... Um, the x-axis, 2 squares is 1, but on the y-axis, y-axis, 2 squares are 2. So every time I go across one square in the x-axis, I'm going to go 2 up, which means it's going to go here, 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 and here. Let's kind of draw these on. Luckily, my good notes is going to ping it as one straight line like that. All we need to do now is just read off the x values for this. So I'd say this x value that we've got here, that looks like minus 0 0.75 to me. Again, they will accept a range of values. And then if I look at this x value, I think this looks like 2.75. So we have a 2.75 for this. So I would say that my solutions are that x is minus 0 0.75 and 2.75. Let's double check we've got this right. So they've said 2.7 and minus 0 0.7, but we've got a range here. Anything between 2.6 and 2.8 and minus 0 0.6 and minus 0 0.8. So we've definitely got that one right. Okay, again, it's just solving the simultaneous equations for this one. This one's pretty easy because this is where they cross over. Just double check that these are the same. Yep, the exact same things that we've got here. So the x coordinate of that is minus 2 and the y coordinate of that is 4. Again, this one's pretty easy. It's just saying when it's equal to 0, that just means that we're talking about the roots. So we're talking about this value and this value. This one is 0 0.6. This one is 3.4. So the solutions are x is 0 0.6 or 3.4. Yep, got these correct and got the other ones correct as well. Okay, this time we want to, it says the diagram shows the graph of x squared plus y squared equals 30.25. It's a circle. We know that that's what those circle equations look like. And then it says, find the solutions for these simultaneous equations. And it does say to use the graph. So it says y minus 2x equals 1. Well, I'm probably just going to rearrange that so that I get y equals 2x plus 1 when y is the subject. So it's going to cross through 1, and the gradient is going to be 2. So that means every time you go one space across, you're going to go two spaces up. And every time you go one space left, you go two spaces down like this. And then I'm going to join these together, and hopefully it's going to make it become a nice straight line for me. And then we're just going to try and find out the solutions of the simultaneous equations. Now, because it's simultaneous equations, that means we want x and y. So this one hasn't drawn exactly how I wanted it to. So not quite as... Oh, no, it has, actually. That's where 5 is. So I'm going to actually erase this little dot, because I think that dot's not where it should be. So I think that this coordinate that we've got here, if this is 7, 6, 5... Four. Okay, I would say this point where it's crossing, it looks like a 5.1 for the x-coordinate. Not the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate. And I would say the x-coordinate looks like it is about 2.1. So x is 2.1 and y is 5.1. And then for this one that we've got over here, it's pretty difficult to read this. But I would say the x-coordinate looks like, I don't know, might be about minus 2.8. And the y-coordinate here... That looks like about minus 4.8. So let's just say what that coordinate was. That was x was minus 2.8 and y is minus 4.8. So the solutions to this are going to be x is 2.1 and y equals 5.1. And then the other pair is minus 2.8 and minus 4.8. Just about squeezed it in. Let's double check that these are in the accepted range. So we've got 2.1 and 5.1 and minus 2.9 and minus 4.7. But it does have these range of values that we've got here. So anything between 2.8 and 3.8 and minus 4.6. Uh, sorry, minus 2.8 and minus 3.0 and minus 4.6 and minus 4.8, which I think ours does work for. So that's everything on uh, solving equations with graphs. It also links to lots of the stuff from the previous bit, which was nonlinear graphs as well. I'm going to continue with this whole series, so if you're finding this useful for your revision, please do make sure that you're subscribed to this and share it to anyone who's just started their GCSEs or is doing revisions for any particular topics as well.